Hey YouTube, I got an interesting topic today I want to bring up that's um, an epidemic, I would say. It's something that I didn't really realize it because I'm in the industry, so it's a job to me. When we get these shifted loads, I'm always lifting containers off chassis because they're shifted to put them on low boys. Or, you know, doing these rollovers day in, day out, all the time. Containers leaning about to fall over because all the cargo went to one side, it wasn't properly secure. So again, like I said, it's just a job to me and I never really put much thought into it on why this happens too much. It's just easy to say, well, it's the driver's fault and be done with it. But I posted this video here recently and it's got like 1,600 comments. One of the most commented videos I've ever posted and they're very polarizing. A lot of people with such certainty and conviction saying it's the driver's fault. Hundreds of others saying it's the shipper's fault. Others saying it's the broker's fault because the broker's the one that's supposed to make sure that you know the shipping company does it right. So I wanted to weigh in on it, but I, I really couldn't because I'm just, I'll just be, you know, talking out of my head without really knowing the facts. So I did some research. I did some Googling. I had a lot of time because I just was on a five week paternity leave break. My baby boy Aries was born July 5th as fans of the channel know. So in between diaper changes and all that, I had a lot of time to Google and the answer is not really what I had thought it would be. I'm going to just spoil it for you. A lot of it goes back to the driver, but a lot of it is it depends. So let's say that alternator video that I posted, for example, hit a car and that family sues, who are they gonna sue? Who has the legal responsibility where the attorney will pick up a law book and say, here's the law, this guy's responsible for this law. And in a state like California where you have percentages from different parties, multiple people can be responsible. That family in the scenario is gonna sue everyone. They're gonna sue the shipper, the manufacturer, the broker, the driver, the company that hired the driver because the company is supposed to ensure that they're properly trained and they're gonna check that in discovery. The driver's supposed to have, you know, all the certifications and do his pre-trip, post-trip, I mean, uh, inspect during it, due diligence, all that stuff, the shipping company. But in terms of law, it didn't really get the answer there's not a definitive answer pretty much so the california handbook when you get your commercial motor vehicle license says that drivers are supposed to inspect their load before and during transport so every x amount of miles and hours you pull over to make sure everything's good you do the tug test yep that ain't going nowhere but when you're hauling containers or trailers they have seals and locks on them you can't open them if you do you lose the load you bought it or you don't get paid and some of these loads are worth millions, if not hundreds of thousands, and you can't afford to, to lose that. So, I mean, it just kind of seems like a disadvantage for these drivers. You pick up, you go to the port, and they put a container on your chassis that just directly came off the boat from China. It's sealed and locked, and you can't look in it. What are the chances that that company did their due diligence, and they loaded it safely so the pallets inside can't shift at all? You know, you're taking a huge gamble. So it's a tough industry. I feel for you truckers taking these sight and scene. But there's some other ones that are pretty cut and dry. I did another uh, popular video where this European YouTuber had a 20-foot lithium, lithium battery and it was like 60,000 pounds. These things are stupid dense. They're crazy heavy. We do them all the time and the you, you'll feel it on your rotators even with two. But in this case, a lot of the comments were mentioning that the driver had it too far forward. Now, I did some more research and besides the DMV handbook, there's California vehicle code and I'm gonna put it right here as well in front of me. These sections, two, three, one, one, four, and five, um, I, I feel they don't really apply to, to what I've been talking about and what I do, but they're the closest I could find in terms of cargo and shifting and all that. And if you read, it says that it's against the auto operative vehicle, which is improperly covered, constructed, or loaded. And the contents must be covered so that no part spills, drops, leaks, blows, sifts, or in any other way escapes from the vehicle. Now, based on research, this you know taught this section comes up a lot with like agriculture trucks and trash trucks, um, garbage bin trucks that go to and from the landfills. You know, like those super tens and end dumps that have tarps over them. Not really to what I'm discussing here, but that's the closest I can find in California. Now, I would love if you guys are in the industry, anyone from DOT. FMCSA, um, any anyone in this industry that knows the law better or or can give some insight, you know, on on what the relevant law is in terms of who's more at fault on these jobs. Now, on the federal level, I mentioned FMCSA. That stands for Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. That one does have some pretty good stuff. That's way more cut and dry. And as I mentioned in this one with the the lithium battery on the trailer, this specific section. FMCSR Part 3, 
9.2.9 says drivers are required to ensure that cargo is properly distributed and adequately secured before operating the commercial motor vehicle. Keywords properly distributed and adequately secured. It also mandates periodic inspections during transit, you know, of course, like the other ones. But this one, again, is, is the verbiage is very specific. Um, this driver, a lot of the comments noticed that he had that load. Everyone feels too far forward and it caused catastrophic damage. His trailer destroyed the welds broke in the front, rivets everywhere, all bad. Landing gear pretty much kissing, scraping against the floor because he broke the trailer. We had to remove it and put it on a heavy haul trailer from Martin at MST. So in a situation like that, that's a specific case law, federal law at that, that deals with this. Now, I couldn't really find anything that says that if you pick up a container with a seal on it and an accident happens due to improper securement of the cargo or load, go after the, the shipper or the broker. It's very, very vague and, and stuff like that. But I mean, just depending on your attorney, I guess you can, you can make a case for it that it, they bear responsibility or X amount of liability. But because of these, the verbiage and all that, it's just, if you're a driver and you're in this industry, just be careful. I personally think that most of these jobs that I get could be avoided with reduced speed and a tentative driving. So just distracted drivers and speeding drivers are the bulk cause of these accidents. So let's say you do have a container with a load that's not really inside the container properly secure. It doesn't help when you speed on off ramps or on ramps with crazy turns. I just did a rollover today. In fact, I'm gonna work on this video after this one. It should come out within, I wanna say before, after this, probably after this video, but I'm gonna just spoil it for you guys. Fully loaded container in a popular hotspot we're always at, and we barrel rolled it in midair. You'll see it right here. This on-ramp right here, Azusa to the eastbound 60 is crazy. We, we're here once a month for rollovers. You guys won't recognize this spot if you're fans of this channel all the time I'm here. So these take the on-ramp a little too hot and it's such a steep curve and a windy one that with speed and gravity, it's just if you have an improperly secure load, it's a recipe for disaster. So let's take a lot of these guys that have that flip right here. If they were to just greatly reduce their speed, go five miles an hour through the off-ramp, chances are... A good majority of them wouldn't flip but again when you factor in speed and, and harsh braking and all that it's just again it's a recipe for disaster so in this industry knowing that a lot of you guys are taking these loads sight unseen just you know i know i'm gonna lose money on it but if everyone did their part and just assumed you had a bad load assume that the, that container you picked up was loaded thousands of miles away by super cheap labor in grueling conditions and of course they didn't secure it just assume that on every load i'm sure there'd be a ton less accidents and i wouldn't have as many cool videos but man it would prevent a lot of damage possibly a ton of injuries fatalities this one statistic i read while researching said there was 200,000 heavy duty motor vehicle commercial motor vehicle accidents attributed to cargo um i think it was something like low because of improper cargo securement or something like that that's an insane number not sure where they got that from, but I know these things are, are kept track of. So even if it's 10, 15% less, that's a lot. That's a lot. So, I mean, so even if you don't have a responsibility or even if you don't have the ability, I should say, to see how they wrap your cargo inside of the container or the trailer you're pulling or the crates, like that alternator job, you at least do have the ability to assume that it's bad and slow down take corners like you know like it's gonna flip every time just assume am i gonna flip go slow 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 that will prevent a ton so with that said i would love to hear what you guys think in the comments if i you know missed any laws or you guys know of additional laws or different agencies that govern all this stuff not just in california but where you're at i would love to read it that way when people ask you know who's at fault or whatever i can be more informed and i don't know maybe this video will gain traction and it'll be an eye opener especially in California, we're right by the ports, one of the busiest ports in the world. So if everyone was a little bit more educated on, on how these loads are, are, how common it is that they're improperly secured, could prevent a lot of accidents and maybe save some lives. So with that said, I'm gonna end this note with a, a welcome back giveaway. I did a 50% giveaway um, when I was at home and it cost me thousands. I didn't factor in something important. This new site that I use, obviously, uh, the company makes them, they ship them out, they do all that. 
So if a shirt's 30 bucks, I don't get $30 when you guys buy it. I get like eight, nine bucks. I have to keep the prices down so you guys would be enticed to buy, which keeps my profits down, which is fine. You know, I got YouTube and everything else. It's mainly just for the fans that request merchandise, but because I did a 50% off sale, I owed quite a few thousand bucks on that one. It was a big loss on mine. And I had like 90 sales, something like that in that three day period. And if a shirt's 30 bucks and I get $8 profit, well, 50% off, that means the company sold it for 15. I owe the difference. Now times that, times all the blankets and duffel bags and whatever. And I kept it up. I wasn't going to be a, a sour Sally and, and take the sale down because of my mess up. So you guys scored huge on that one. So I learned my lesson. So from now on, 20% sale. Uh, it's going to be good for the rest of this week. Uh, this one, I think, was the most popular one. It's got, you know, the Hulk on the back of it and that QR code that if you scan it, takes it to my YouTube channel. Love my fans. I'm so glad to be back. You guys are the best. Drop some knowledge in the comments on if you have any relevant info on, you know, this whole load shift pandemic. Peace out, guys.